Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, I gave this problem in class, uh, and I think it's a pretty good problem. So you have a Ferris wheel, and it's spinning around, and so the question is, what is the apparent weight of the person at the top of the Ferris wheel? What's the apparent weight at the bottom? In this particular case, the Ferris wheel has a radius of 11 meters, the mass of the person is 70 kilograms, and it takes 30 seconds to go around. That's the question. Now I gave this question in class, um, some students got quite confused, and I think the important point I want to make first is that if you got confused, that's okay, just keep working on it. And if you're just coming to this problem right now, work on the problem. Me solving the problem without you getting stuck significantly is not going to help. It just looks fun, it's just entertainment, which is fine. So if you didn't get stuck, if you didn't struggle with this problem, go back and do that. You can pause this video, you can come back, but do that. Okay, watching me solve it's not going to help you if you haven't gone through that steps. This is a great way to check your answer or to give you insight when you get stuck. But just seeing a whole bunch of problems is not going to solve it. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Now let's solve the problem. So the first thing is, what is apparent weight? I've talked about this before. I don't want to go into a lot of details. But if I have a person standing on the ground like that, then there's two forces. There's a gravitational force pulling down, and then there's the normal force pushing up. It turns out that the gravitational force is not what we feel. What we instead feel is the normal force. The normal force is the apparent weight. I know that's weird, but essentially gravity pulls the same on all parts of our bodies. So we don't really feel it. We only feel that differential force of things pushing on us. So the normal force is what you feel. And I can prove this if you go to the Tower of Terror and it drops you and you're inside and there's no normal force, you feel weightless. But there's clearly weight. Okay, so the weight doesn't change. Your parent weight changes. So the normal force is the parent weight. Okay, so let's look at the top of the Ferris wheel. Here's the top. You're at the top. Here's your person. I'm gonna draw a fourth diagram. So there's two forces acting on the person. There's the gravitational force pulling down. That's pretty easy. And then the seat's pushing up, and that's the normal force. Like that. And I've drawn the normal force shorter because it's shorter. The parent weight at the top of the Ferris wheel is lower than the gravitational force. If you've been on a Ferris wheel, at the top you feel that little tickle in your stomach because you don't feel right, because you're not just standing there. It's a lot like in an elevator that accelerates down. Same thing. You feel lower weight. And of course it depends on the size of the ferris wheel and stuff so that effect can be more pronounced for smaller ferris wheels but nonetheless. That's my force diagram. There's no forces in the x-direction. Even if this is moving that way at the time, that's just the direction of the velocity. There's no force pushing it that way. But it is accelerating. If you're moving in a circle, you accelerate. And the acceleration is the direction of that acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So if I'm up here, I'm actually accelerating towards the center of the circle. So that means that if I write this, my F net in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. So I have what forces are in the y direction? I have the normal force, n. I have the gravitational forces in the negative y direction minus mg, and that's going to be mass times acceleration. So the mass I have, and the acceleration of an object moving in a circle is v squared over r. Uh, you can derive that, it's not too terribly difficult, but that's the acceleration of an object moving in a circle. In this case, it's in the negative y direction, so this is going to be negative v squared over r. So I want to solve for n. I know the mass, I know g, I know that mass, I know r, but I don't know v. So let's find the velocity, the speed that this thing goes around. So I can write up here, v equals 2 pi r over t. If I consider this Ferris wheel, and if you go all the way around, then you went through the circumference of that circle, which is 2 pi r, and it took a time t. So the velocity in this case would be 2 pi times 11 meters divided by 30 seconds. It took 30 seconds to go around. So that v 
is, I'll, I'll calculate that in a second. You can get a number. Now I have that down here. So let's solve this for n. So I'm going to add mg to both sides. And I get n equals mg minus m v squared over r. And now I can just put m in all my values. I have 70 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram minus v squared over r. And let's put in the values. Now, I left my calculator right down here, so I'm going to do it on my computer real quick. I'll be right back. I'm, not, I'm still here. I'm just typing. Don't get, don't get alarmed. Uh, I'm just using Python for my calculator. I like to do that. I should have had this all prepared beforehand, but I wasn't prepared. Okay, so I'm just going to type in some things. R equals 11. G equals 9.8. M equals 70. V equals... 2 times pi times r divided by 30 seconds. So now I can just put all my things in. I get n equals m times g minus v squared divided by r. And I'm going to print m times g also. Okay. So n is equal to, I guess I should print, if you want me to print v, I'll do that, the velocity. Okay, the velocity is 2.3. And if I put that in down here, I get n equals 6826 newtons. And just as a comparison, the weight of a person just staying there with the same mass, the weight would be mg, and that's 6860. So the weight is 6860, the parent weight is 6826, so a little bit less. You feel a little bit less in your weight at the top. If you went faster, you'd have, this would be a greater speed, and you'd subtract even a greater number and you feel even lower weight. And in fact, you could get to zero apparent weight at the top if it's going fast enough, and you might want to calculate that and see how fast you should go. But this is a realistic thing. You don't feel super lower weight. It's just more of a realistic uh, Ferris wheel. Okay, but now let's do the problem. What's different at the bottom? At the bottom of the Ferris wheel is different because I still have the same forces, but what changes is the direction of the acceleration. Now I'm accelerating up instead of down. So everything's the same except this. It's no longer accelerating in the negative direction, it's in the positive direction. So that changes. So at the top, my, in order to accelerate up, the normal force is going to, have to be greater than the weight. So I have the same velocity, but now I have this same equation. If I solve this for n, I get n equals mg plus mv squared over r. So the only difference, and I can change this in my calculation over here, is I'm changing that from a minus to a plus. I'm going to do that right here. I'm right here. I'm not going away. Just right over here. So now I get 6894. So this is greater than the gravitational force greater than your weight. You feel heavier at the bottom because now you're accelerating up. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got confused working on that first and then came this, but maybe you just got entertained and that's cool too.